Are you looking for the best gaming content creation laptop that there is out there in the market today? Because Asus has released the Zephyrus G16DU605MY. It is a really a beautiful laptop. It could even possibly compete with the likes of a Apple MacBook M3 Pro. That's right, you heard correctly, as this machine is built with the top specifications and it is the most tricked out Windows laptop you're ever gonna hear because this laptop may excite you. This is going to be the review of the Asus ROG Zephyrus G16 GU605MY. As you can take a look on the exterior of it, it is CNC precision built with the tightest tolerances possible to fit everything that you love so much when it comes to a gaming laptop or using it for content creation, it doesn't sacrifice height or weight, which is the most annoying part when you do have a laptop. So you can easily travel with this thing anywhere you go as it only weighs 1.95 kilograms and 4.3 pounds. It has this beautiful gunmetal look on the outside of it and the way it dissipates heat is just amazing as it uses vapor chambers to go through the main board first and dissipates the heat through the heat sinks then outside the back of the hinges away from the laptop completely so you don't even feel the heat when you are using this laptop. Now the IO ports are pretty useful especially that ASUS has provided you for this laptop as it has a three and a half millimeter jack, has a USB 3.2, version two, USB-A ports, has two of them, USB-C, which is power delivery, which can power up to display port 1.4, and it has a HDMI port, where it goes up to version 2.1, and power brick plug-in, which is a square-shaped power adapter, which almost resembles like a USB-C, but it's a little bit more thicker, and it is a universal fit, so you don't have to worry about any awkward fittings. It just slides right in. You have the, the beautiful slash lighting that it has, which is completely different from its prior models as you can change the look of it. Currently, this is usually off when the laptop is disconnected from its power port in order to save your battery life. But you can use this for notification purposes to let you know if you have an email or if the battery is running low or any type of notification that you would like to set it for. Labeling is so discreet, which is what I really like about this laptop, where it almost looks hidden. It kind of gives it a classy gaming laptop look to where you wouldn't, this would be kind of a sleeper. You wouldn't even expect this to be a gaming laptop. So it's really nice to fit in and the smudging when you are touching the exterior isn't really too bad as it's pretty much anodized. Now let's get into the laptop itself. As we open it up here, it has a Windows Hello. You're gonna see the blinking red lights appear on the top of the webcam where it will usually recognize you to open up the laptop. Backlit keyboard where it is completely RGB, where you can customize it to static, to cycle, to color cycle, to rainbow, to whichever RGBs that you would like through ASUS ROG Armory Crate, which we will get to in a little bit. It has a beautiful large trackpad, gives you so much room when you are using it, it's hard to be uncomfortable when you are using this laptop. The keyboard spacing is literally perfect. It is a very comfortable keyboard to use when you are using it for any type of daily task or even when you're gaming so you don't get any type of finger fatigue when you do use this. It also has these speakers up here on the side, it has the tweeters and the subwoofer which gives some really decent sound. And most importantly, let's go over the specifications about this laptop here. This has an Intel i9 Ultra, which is a 185H, has up to 2.3 gigahertz, has a boost clock of up to 5.1 gigahertz, has 16 cores, 22 threads. It also features AI Boost MPU. It also has a RTX 4090 built into this little machine. It also has up to 16 gigabytes of VRAM, up to 110 watts of power. I know it's not the full usage of power, but it does have up to 110 watts, maybe a little bit over, even up to 120 when the power brick is plugged in. It also has up to 1700 megahertz of boost clock. It also features 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, 
Now, this is a little bit of the negative side of it. It is soldered in because it is LPDDR5. Anytime you hear that, it just means that this is a loss for them to do LPDDR5, especially on a gaming laptop or if you expect to use this for any type of productivity usage. It also has two terabytes of NVMe storage of PCI Express 4.0. That's another miss, I gotta say. It doesn't really matter for gaming wise, but for productivity, if you're looking for PCI Express 5.0, it does not have it. It does have up to two PCI Express 4.0 NVMe slots where you can put up to two of them in this beautiful machine. So you can at least upgrade the storage if you need to. It also has Wi-Fi 6E, which is another miss because again, 6E is something that is more 2023 than I would say 2024. I was hoping that they would install or have Wi-Fi 7 built into this laptop. It does have Bluetooth 5.3 built into this laptop. It has a beautiful ROG Nebula display, which is OLED, features up to 240 Hertz with 0.02 milliseconds response time. It also has 1 million to one contrast ratio. It is 2560 by 1600, so it's two and a half K, and it's 100% DCI-P3, where it gives some really magnificent looking colors, whether you are in game, whether you're watching a movie, or you are doing some sort of content creation, which gives you the most accuracy. And most importantly, it is one of the first OLED laptops where it has G-Sync compatibility and it does have a MUX switch, which is built into Armory Crate. I got to talk to you about taking advantage of the Armory Crate software about this laptop first, because it has Armory Crate in it. You're going to be taking advantage of some of the features that it does have. Here is where you could go into the MUX switches, where you could go into eco mode, you can go into normal mode, you can go into a performance mode and a ultimate mode in Armory Crate here. Now this will be used in many different ways, especially depending on the use of your laptop, whether you are just browsing the internet, watching YouTube, or you are doing some hardcore gaming, or you're doing some type of Adobe Photoshop work. It all depends on the type of use that you need this laptop for. And this is where it is the most useful part when it comes to taking advantage of the battery life. This is where Intel's Meteor Lake does kick in, where it does use its MPU to help figure out which tasks are the most important where you will use the power, whether it's from the CPU or the GPU. Here you can go into your slash lighting, your RGBs, practically all your other functions. And Armory Crate does have the ability to be able to update your laptop with the latest firmware if it is out of date. Let's go through the benchmarks real quick. As you can take a look at how different it can be when you are using it in performance mode on battery and when you are in performance mode when it is plugged in through power. Now, if you look at through power of normal performance, it goes up to 25,447 versus 23,142. Now you look at Firestrike Ultra, it reaches 9,680 when it is plugged in, 5,863 when it is not plugged in. And the reason being, it's also trying to conserve power as well when you are in battery mode so it doesn't go to waste. Now it isn't a terrible feature, but if you really need the performance, then it is more suggested that you need to plug in this laptop if you want to take advantage of its full features. Even though it has Intel's newest Meteor Lake inside, there is some of its caveats here. Most performance, when you take a look at the chart, is that you can see a lot of it comes from mostly, not from Ultimate Turbo as you would naturally think, but a lot of the performance comes from when you in, are in normal turbo. So if you are using apps such as Adobe, that is the most suggested version. As you can see, the budget benchmarks as that reaches the highest scores where it will give you less of the issues if you are in normal turbo. When you're in normal turbo, your games and your applications will perform the best in both directions. When you look at ultimate mode, you're probably thinking, where did it go wrong? Why is it so bad when it comes to its benchmark scores? Reason being is because ultimate mode is directly relying on the laptop's GPU. It's relying on the RTX 4090 to do most of its task, including its 
work such as Adobe where it is more CPU. Whatever task that you're using, whether you're browsing the internet, such as the Jetstream benchmarks and the Pudget Premiere Pro and Pudget Photoshop, you can see that Ultimate doesn't perform the best when it comes to the ultimate mode for this laptop. What really works for ultimate mode? It is best when you are gaming because those are going to be the most GPU reliant. It is highly recommended. If you do go into ultimate mode, go into a game because that is where it will benefit the most, especially if you want to get the most out of ultra graphics or if you want to get the most FPS, that is the best suggestion. That's when you want to use ultimate for every other task when you're plugged in, it's best to go normal turbo and normal performance is the third best task. During benchmarking, I did notice some noise. If you're familiar with GPU coil wine, you kind of hear something like that inside of the laptop. So if you are stressing your laptop, especially if it is in silent mode or if it is in performance mode, you might hear a slight coil whine. Now it doesn't happen very often. It didn't really happen in game, but mostly happened from stress testing during benchmarks. So it's something I wouldn't really worry about as much. Now let's talk about gaming wise, about how well this laptop performs when it is in game. I gotta tell you, it's been pretty good, it's decent. Now, the reason why I just say decent is because you get the frame rates that you can expect out of a laptop when you are gaming. Now you can get up to, in Hell Divers, I was reaching an average about 120 frames per second. Call of Duty, you can pull averages between 160 to 180 frames per second when you are in games such as Resident Evil. Now this is with the one of the top, the higher graphics, you can go up to nearly 100 frames per second. So you get some decent frame rates when you are gaming. Now, when you are going into something more of battery mode, you notice here it will take a hit, just as I mentioned about Cyberpunk 2077. And from a Shadow of Tomb Raider, you can notice that the frame rates do vary depending on the type of mode you are in. Now, if you're gaming on battery, I highly recommend gaming on a normal performance. If you are gaming plugged in, go gaming ultimate as it can lead to the best results, but obviously it's gonna be a little bit more noisy. At least this laptop isn't as noisy as anything under the RTX 4080, because if you do have anything under the RTX 4080 and the Zephyrus G16 line, because it has a third fan, but luckily this laptop doesn't have a third fan. It just uses vapor chamber and two Asus fans. So it doesn't really get as noisy. Now, when you do hook this up to a monitor, such as the PG-34 or PG-32, it works excellent. You can use a USB-C to hook it up. Now, even though it does feature power delivery, I would also highly suggest to plug in your laptop through the AC adapter, because this is where the software kind of gets confused here. Now, this is one of the things that I have noticed when using the Asus Frog Zephyrus at G16, is if you are plugged in through USB-C and your monitor does have power delivery, it's gonna think that the GPU can produce the plugged in power. The laptop will fail to produce the results that you need when you are gaming on the monitor because it will not have enough power because you are not plugged in through a power source. So please make sure that you are, especially if you are hooked up to a monitor and go into ultimate for the best results. Let me talk more about productivity and consecration for those especially that are looking for a dual purpose laptop such as this one right here. Now I can tell you it doesn't struggle at all when you go into Lightroom, Photoshop has no issues. Now when you go into something like Premiere Pro and After Effects, it depends on how complicated of a project you go. Now if you go into a little bit more graphics and you use a lot more layers, when you do use Premiere Pro, I could see a little bit more of a struggle on that side. When you are working such complicated projects, it's gonna require a lot more power. Now I did test it battery powered and I did experience a little bit of stuttering when you are working on projects such as Premiere Pro. Not a lot, very slightly. And again, this is with Premiere Pro stacked with After Effects usage. For those who are content creators, this is a pretty decent option for those who are looking for the battery of life side when it comes to gaming and content creation. Content creation use, I maxed out for about an hour and 45 minutes. Now this is in normal performance mode. 
when I was using Adobe Premiere strictly. Now, when I was using Adobe Premiere and After Effects, I got a little bit over one hour of usage. Gaming wise, the most I can get out of the laptop I tried both in regular normal performance and I've also tried normal silence. I could not get up to the two hour mark. Of course, I did not have this laptop tuned. This is just with the default settings. Now I'm sure if I tune some of the settings that more than likely that I would be able to pull more life out of it. Now, of course the slash light was not enabled on the back of the laptop while I was on battery power. During battery power, I was about at 40 to 50% luminance when it comes to the monitor lighting and I had no RGB lights enabled when I was using it. So even though everything was disabled on that side, the most basic side that I could not get about two hours of use when it comes to productivity or gaming usage. But now when it comes to more of browsing internet or watching YouTube or watching Netflix or any of those type of activities, I got up to five hours and 56 minutes of usage, which is a large difference because you are not using the graphics card at all when you are using the laptop. But when it comes to Nvidia's Mux Switch and Armory Crates, there were some issues that I ran into where sometimes you would load up a game and then the graphics card would not enable. Now it would be, it's usually a very simple fix. What you would have to do is just go into ultimate mode in order for it to force the graphics card to kind of start back up again and then it will act normal. Now, more than likely this could have happened from the case when I did hook up the exterior monitor to this laptop because I only strictly had USB-C and more than likely from there, it seemed that the driver was probably more than likely confused as it thought it had a power source. And that's why I recommended a power source when you do plug in your laptop to a monitor. I have to give this laptop a seven out of 10. I love the craftsmanship. I love the idea where Asus is going for the battery life is where it is killing me the most to me personally this could this is very close to becoming a macbook pro killer only if the battery lasts a little bit longer i gotta say it really is the best one of the best gaming laptops you can get out there how light and the width of this laptop you can't really ask for anything more so a seven out of ten I gotta give it. Fam and guys, if you're interested in taking a look at this laptop, make sure you look in the description box down below. I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is looking for a gaming content creation laptop, make sure you share this video with them. And also, if you're not part of the big wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my X handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fam and guys, let me know what you think of the Asus ROG Zephyrus G16. Or is there a laptop that is on your mind? Let me know in the contents down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Musa signing out.